Hi, I'm Kelly. Beep, 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 beep. Hi, Shaky Shoop. Hi there. I'm trying to be casual. Oh, hi there. <sighs> I'm glad you could join me today. Hi, I'm Kelly. I don't want to kill another battery because my kids are all locked in the bedroom right now and they're probably getting hungry. I need to do this right now. Hi, we're going to make a quilt today. <laughs> So in your kit, you should have a spool of thread, two pieces of floss, two smaller needles for the thread and one larger needle for the floss, four smaller pieces of fabric, and one larger one for the bottom of the pillow, and a bag of stuffing to fill your pillow when you're done. You're also going to need a ruler a pencil and a pair of scissors. If you don't have a ruler, you can use a hard covered book if you have one. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is put aside what we aren't using right now. So you can put the stuffing, the floss, and the back panel into the bag inside of the side. Now we're going to lay the squares out to make sure that they line up equally. And then we'll know what it looks like. Okay, now we're going to put two of them aside and lay these two good face in together and flatten it out. Then we're going to take the ruler and <clears throat> nearing the edge, we're going to make a line right here for stitching. So we can follow that line and not go all crooked. Now we're going to thread the needle and we need uh, about an arm's length of thread um, so that it doesn't get knotted. Once you get your needle threaded, tie the two ends together in a knot and we're going to do a running stitch. So basically you just pop it through at the line and make it so it's about this far apart and then leave the same size space and make it all the way to the end. Now once you get to the end, you can tie a knot like that and then again like that and So now that you have two of the panels together, you can just even it out to make sure that the thread didn't get too tight. Now that we're done this piece, we can stitch these two together the same way. You'll have to retie your knot and redo your line. Now we're going to stitch them all together so that they can make the square again. So we we'll just flatten this with our hands to make sure that the stitches aren't bunched up. And then we lay this one 
on top like this. And like that. And we can use our ruler again to draw the line. And stitch them together. Now that we've stitched this together, just smooth it down with your hands making sure the seams are flat and we're going to top stitch the seams to keep them from bunching. So when you're top stitching, you make sure that these little flaps here are on the same side. So you come up from the bottom and you can make them really small so you can't see them, or you can make them the same size as you did before. So you can quickly just top stitch the whole thing here. And then once you're done, we're going to do the next step. So after watching that, I hope you've come up with some ideas for your project. And here's some that we've done. Um, just a very simple one where there's just a running stitch. Um, I tried to add to the pattern on here and um, do a flower to match the pattern, um, heart with an initial, and just some decorative stitching here just to add to it. Now these are just all separate samples. So you don't have to do anything like this. Um, this is one that my daughter started here. And it says dream on because this is a pillow. So she tried to do some writing. And then there's this one that my daughter has been working on as a gift for someone. So she's waiting to top stitch with embroidery floss to make it look a little more decorative. When you've completed personalizing your quilt panels, tuck away your needle and your extra floss and take out your larger piece of fabric and your thread needle and thread. And then we can place our panel on top of the larger piece of fabric and make our lines to stitch it together. After you've marked your stitching lines, stitch all the way around the square except for one panel, leaving one panel open for stuffing. Once you've got this all stitched up, you can flip the right side out and make sure that the corners are fully pushed out and that your seams are all closed. And now you can see more what your pillow is going to look like. Now you're ready to fill your pillow with stuffing. I'm using wool because that's what we have here. So it's not going to look like what you have. And you just slowly put your pieces of stuffing in, making sure that the corners are full and then it's not too chunky in different spots of the pillow and that it's even. Now that it's full of stuffing, we're going to stitch this part here closed. We're going to stitch it with the open ends folded in like that. And you can use the running stitch or you can also use a stitch that will hide the seams just a little bit more by tucking this in and grabbing from the inside and pulling it over and grabbing from the inside and pulling it over 
so that they're kind of hidden in there. So whichever stitch you do, don't pull it too tight. So now I just snip that and then just flatten your pillow, make sure that it's all even inside there. And yours will have your pictures on it, of course. And um, to make this stronger at the edges here, you can top stitch around using one of the stitches you saw on the video that you watched to make it more decorative. Um, or you can just do a top stitch with the embroidery floss. Congratulations, you're done. Thanks for doing this with me. Until next time, bye.